Yeah, they ain't gonna like it. They ain't gonna like it. I be getting to the money. Everybody mad. Welcome to another episode of the Exo Tribesman Podcast. So today I am joined with my special guest, Ivan, from Inked Up Designs. And so today I wanted this this show, as you guys know, if you are avid listeners of the show, you know I don't really do structure and flow. I just kind of go with the flow and like let the conversation lead where it's supposed to lead. I, I feel like there's enough shows with with a, um with a structure that have a we're gonna do this today and then we're gonna talk about this 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 and you know the flow of the show and that's cool but i like the free-flowing shows because i feel like the conversation flows a lot more naturally like it would if you met someone at a restaurant or at a at a business meeting or at a business meetup place and you guys were new exchanging information I want the flow of conversation to have that similar feel. So I want Ivan to introduce himself. I've known Ivan for over five years. I think it might be a little closer to seven, actually. But it's been over five years, I know for sure. And through this journey, I've watched him completely grow as a man, as a businessman, as a person. And so I really want him to talk about his journey of getting to this place where I feel he's becoming his best self. Tell the people about you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm Ivan Jones. I am uh, a native of Birmingham, Alabama. Moved to Atlanta in 2013. Um, I was a teacher. Taught in Clayton County Schools and Atlanta Public Schools. Um, Had a chance to explore entrepreneurship by way of Kirk. Um, He started me out doing Lyft and Uber, actually. (laughs) And I was so against it for a long time. A long time. Because I didn't want nobody in my car. Mm-mm, ain't nobody in my car. Ain't nobody <laughs> getting in my car. Uh-uh. They're going to put their little dirty feet in my car. That was, that was, that was Ivan all day. And so, um, you know, once I kind of got dived into it, and I, I treated it as a summer gig because I was teaching um, during the school year, uh, during the normal um, fall and spring. So I used it as I a summer I think I remember time that. Mm-hmm. I started in the summer, actually. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, if I did this in the summertime, I can keep this going in the fall, mm-hmm. during the spring, doing a little, you know, when I get off work, I can do a little Uber lift, but um, I'm really just lift because I started with lift only for mm-hmm. a long time. But anyway, um, since then, I, 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 I dived into designing things in 2015, and I designed a... Um, little sketch of a design for my alma mater, Alabama a and University in Huntsville. And it was for homecoming. So I posted it on social media. I posted it on my profile picture. Because, um, you know, usually during events, like for homecoming, a lot of HBCU grads or whatever, they may change their profile picture to, to resemble that they're prepar- preparing for homecoming or whatever the game is. So, so I, I, did I didn't that. go to HBCU, guys. So I don't <laughs> I don't know how this culture works. He's you know, very dived into HBCU. So. And, you know, there's still time. We have mm. master's programs at all black, a lot of black colleges. We can, still, we can, we can go, you know. Never. Um, Never. I mean, they're not A&M, but, you know, I mean, they'll do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But no, seriously, I posted a design. So I posted a design for um, A&M for Homecoming. It literally said, long live thy fame. Long, long live thy fame is a phrase that um, it's in the last stanza of our uh, university song. Oh, okay. And so what I did was I exchanged the O in long for a bulldog head, which is our mascot. Mm-hmm. And I uh, exchanged the A in fame with the, our actual logo. And some people who may have seen Alabama a ms logo, it was like a big A with A, M, and a big U. But you put emphasis on the A since mm-hmm. it was part of the fame. It took off like crazy. Everyone was just sharing it. You know, they didn't know who, who did, did it. it. So it was just, you know, and so I, I look up and I see a lot of people posting. I'm just like, oh, this is this is deep. Like, you know, this is, a, this is, this is real. 
And so a lot of people asked me to um, make a shirt for it. I said, I don't know how to make no damn, I don't know how to make no damn shirt. Like I've never Is that done how it went? That. Huh? I was good. Go ahead. What? Keep, keep going. No, because I, I also do not know the story of like how you first got started actually. I um the very first thing I did, I took that design and I took it to Custom Make. Custom Make is an um, online retailer where you can pretty much upload your designs. And they will they will print them out for mm-hmm. you, and they'll ship them to you. They have several shipping options, but they're a big, a big, big screen printing company, online screen printing company. And so I allowed them to print one shirt for me. I ran into some issues with um, copyright for the university because mm-hmm. it included the university logo, and I had to get it approved. And um, we got it approved, and I just wanted a sample shirt just to see what it would look like, and you know it worked out. It did pretty well. Um, I had to go through a whole little phase with licensing to use Alabama a and logo because because in my mind, I feel like if I'm doing something, I'm going to do it all out. It's not going to be the right way. It's not going to be just some under the cover stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, the president of the university could have had my shirt and I wanted to make sure I was Legit. doing things right. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I didn't want to use the university logo and wasn't, didn't have rights to use it. So anyway, I did all that. And um, for a while, I was only doing things for a and I remember that. Now, that I remember. It I was, was only, only stuff for his alma mater. That was it. And it, I mean, be mindful, I was teaching. So I didn't really have time to dive into no marketing, trying to find a crowd. My crowd was A&M fans. Everybody who went to A&M, anyone that who was, wore maroon and white, that's what I, um, that was my audience at mm-hmm. the time. But it got a little overwhelming because I felt that, okay... You know, this is cool during the fall because, you know, during the fall you have football season, you have um, a lot of the classics, the black college classics and all. But after that, you know, that was pretty much it. So I said, how can I expand this, you know? Year round. And so I dived into designing some more. I I purchased um, Adobe Illustrator, which is a sister program to Adobe Photoshop, which a lot of people are mostly familiar with. Um, but a lot of people use Photoshop for like flyers and other um, ways to manipulate photos. Mm-hmm. Um, people use Illustrator for to um, create to create T-shirts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can create on Photoshop as well, it's but from my same. experience, yeah, they're not the same at all. Um, but I, I, most of what Illustrator does, it allows you to do things um, vector files. So mm-hmm. vector files are pretty much files where if you send to someone, like if you see something on a billboard. They could be able to expand it as long as they, or, or wide as they can, and it won't change the quality. Or even if you make it small, it won't change the quality. But when you see those photos, where the moment you make it bigger, you start to see it cr- cringe Pixelated. up. The yeah. pencil, right? The pencil, mm-hmm. like that's not a vector file. But anyway, I had to learn that. Got educated with that. Bought the little uh, uh, system, the little software for that. And it was like twenty dollars a month, and uh, I just kind of practiced on designing. So I had a girl. She asked me to do some shirts for her family reunion. Let me mind if I'm teaching. So this is just the side of I remember the this family reunions was felt for from the outside, it felt like the next thing after I saw you doing everything for the schools, mm-hmm. specifically Alabama. And you know. Hey, let me get it right. There's two. Alabama. You have Roll Tide and you have the Bulldog. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, y'all not the same. We are not. Oh. Two different universities. <laughs> Completely two different. It's kind of like night and day, black and white. Okay. Literally. All right. Okay. Well, for Alabama A and M, that you. was where I saw the first level of screen printing happening for your school, and then it felt like every day on Facebook I was just seeing you pump out these um, T-shirts for like like um, family reunions, and I was like, "All right, he the family reunion T-shirt guy now." So talk about that because it felt like there was a level where. That was what you were doing for a while. Um, so what happened, I had to do a little research, and that comes with anything. You have to do research in regard to how to how to do the production. Because being that I had to reach out to Custom Ink, I went to, I reached out to Custom Ink that one time and that one time only. After that, I um, sought out local people, people screen printing companies that were, that were local, local here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, so that I can, you know, either go in and see the process and, you know, it won't be a, a. It won't take as long mm-hmm. it's because it's about a week and a half for me to get, to get the, it um, back from custom ink. Yeah, but when you go local, you can. It's something yeah, I mean, that it may take possibly... a week too, but you can you can save on shipping costs by either going to pick it up. Oh, okay. And you, like I said, I'll have the access because because one of the companies I, w- I used to go to, they used to let me go in the back and see how the shirts are printed. And oh, it's pretty good. That kind of um, 
that kind of got me a little motivated to try to learn how to do it on my own. But for about maybe seven or eight months, I pretty much outsourced. And what's funny is that I told a lot of people, because the people who were ordering shirts for me, they thought I was printing them directly. At the beginning. And it's at the beginning. Okay. Because ultimately, a lot of people, you know, they try to weed out the middleman. And for a while, I was the middleman. They wanted to go straight to whomever, you know, because the goal was for me to source it out to someone else, me get a profit while they're getting paid, the company's getting paid too, and then the client is satisfied with the shirts. But for a while, that's what I had to do. Then um, I started researching how to do it on my own, at least how to start. Mm -hmm. And so I purchased my first heat press in 2016, which I still have to this day. Um, and what happened from there was that I used a company called Transfer Express. Transfer Express was pretty much a company where they you could upload your designs or mm -hmm. you can create designs on their little platform and what they would do they would print them out on screen printed transfer sheets with that oh, transfer was sheet. that that little paper i just saw earlier yes well, okay did, yeah. all right again. actually what's funny that's the exact same company i used to use okay so fun i was just like oh my goodness like i hadn't seen them flashback <laughs> right i was like oh my god i hadn't used them in so long so um so I, I had to, uh, but the only thing about them was that, you know, the pricing was a little high mm -hmm. per sheet. Because mm -hmm. you can do like gang sheets where you have What's so many designs. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's where you have a bunch of designs on, on one sheet. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Just cut out? Cut, cut them out? Okay. But then you got to worry about the sizing too. Because like there were some designs where I had stuff for adults and kids. So and the size of the image itself has to shrink or get bigger. To, the goal was to try to get as many gang sheets as possible because the more sheets, the more money Got you it. have to pay. But if you have a gang sheet, you can get more on one sheet than having two separate sheets. Okay. So so then why did you go that route? Um. So what what was the the reason for going that route instead of? Because I know like. For, I do watch a not a screen printer, but it's another lady that I know personally. She makes like like personalized cups and stuff, or like stuff like this. Mm -hmm. She makes those things, and when you put the 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 vinyl on it, you can print it right. Like you can print that sheet yourself. So how come you went to a company? Or this is the beginning of your journey. So that's the very beginning. So okay, 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 okay. All right, go so, ahead. So, so, so for about for a while, I only had a heat press, and I was using Transfer Express. I'd be mindful; I was still using the third party company mm -hmm. when when needed. Okay, um, but you were, but now you are starting to do your own press. Oh, in, yes, indoor. Everything okay. I do is in home, is in house now um, mm -hmm. for the most part. The only way I would do something out, the only reason I would outsource right now. Is if it's like a lot, if I have a lot of orders and someone comes with an order they need quickly, I'll either outsource it to someone or really just refer them to someone else so we can just, you know, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure, you know, I have a few friends who print shirts as well and I try, if, if it's something they can handle because I trust them, you know, if it's something they can handle, I'll just send a client their way. So that they can um, get that business because I can't at the moment. Because of whatever. You know, we have a lot of orders. Like, I just finished a partnership with uh, Slutty Vegan. And um, I had about 100 and some shirts for, for, for them to do. And it was kind of like if someone had called and said, hey, I need, you know, 40 shirts tomorrow. That wouldn't have happened. Yeah, because you I can't. stuck on Slutty Vegan. So I would have had to outsource that to someone else. But it just depends on the situation. You know, every order is different. Mm -hmm. Every order is different. You know, you have that one client who will call you and say, hey, I need 200 shirts in two days. Whereas you have another client who will say, oh, I just need 40 shirts, but we don't need them until like two or three weeks from now. Right. So it just you got to just do the timing. The it's all planning. about timing. Right. It's all about the timing. Mm -hmm. You know, just try to uh, educate your clients on the Time best frames. route to go so that they won't, so that you won't be rushed and so that, you know, the client won't be dissatisfied if you don't reach their deadline. That is exactly what it's all about. So it is. It's just about managing the ex managing expectations is the one of the biggest parts of a, your job as an entrepreneur to be able to say, hey, I can do exactly what you need, but it's going to take me X amount of time to do it. Or I can't do what you need in this time frame. But if I had more time, I could get it done. Or based on the time frame you need, it's not something I could do. But I do have X, Y, and Z I can refer you to. They're very good friends of mine. They print shirts whenever I'm, whenever an order doesn't match 
what I can fit in the time flow of what I have. So that's very important. So at the the sort of middle part of this journey, so now you have got your own heat press and you're starting to print things. And so where do you move forward into the... Because I see now that you have a bigger print press. It's bigger than this heat press that I can see here. This Because I, I imagine, how many shirts can you print on this? Um, it just depends on what it is. You know, you, you have to, um, because I still use the heat press, but mainly just for like, if you if I need, like, you know, sometimes you get clients that need numbers and names on the back. And um, it just depends on what's needed. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just, you know, go from there based on the, um, based on the, um, the order, because like, it, like I said, um, I, and I will say it will take, it takes a little longer on the heat press, but you know, it takes longer to print. Yes. Here? Really? Because what will happen is, um, like even with the transfer express transfers, you would have to line it up with the heat press. You will have to make sure that the transfer is on there correctly because once it's on there it's on there and if you messed it up you gotta get another shirt and try it again so it's mm. kind of like you know um the goal is always to find a way to make it um as time cons con uh, as time efficient as possible but I mean, you know, a lot of people start, most of your people start with heat press. That's what I figured. That's what, that's, is... that's, but I mean, it takes so long. But, but then at the same time, a lot of people don't really expect, it would be, it's not logical to do four and 500 shirts using a heat press. Oh, so, so if this you're is doing, something you do like five or ten well, or no, something. I mean, you could do all, you probably could pull a hundred on them. I think one time I pulled a hundred and something on doing a heat press, but that was all I had. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, using that, it just um, takes a little time out because um, it's, it's just a little longer. And see, right after I, um, for a while, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but I know after mm -hmm. after a while, I, I got rid of, when well, I got rid of, I stopped using Transfer Express um, and purchased a vinyl cutter. So a vinyl cutter is the next phase where oh, I'm that? able to, that's pretty much the cutter back here. Oh, and that so thing what right happens, here. Okay. What happens is you will upload your design and you have um, vinyl, heat transfer vinyl. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the machine will cut out the design, whatever you, you'll like send it to. Like to specific to the, to the logo or mm -hmm. the what? Also, it's not, so it doesn't have to be a gang like on the other one. You can do basically right. individuals. You can do individuals, but depending on how big the vinyl is, you can get, you can still kind of do gangs because they have large, um, they have large sizes of the vinyl per color. So like if you have something that's just words only, mm -hmm. if you had something, let's just say you had something that literally had XL Tribe on there. If the sheet is big enough, and that's all you had on there, mm -hmm. if the sheet is big enough, like let's say a foot long or even... Um, yeah, foot long. You could probably get about seven or eight of those on there. Oh, okay. On that okay. one vinyl sheet. Okay. You know, maybe more, but just depends on um, that. Okay. So then, so now you're, now you've up or can we say upgraded? Absolutely. All right. So Upgrade you grade Basically, he upgraded from the screen print to this print press. That's what it's called, right? Yes, so it's a screen printing press. A screen printing mm -hmm. press, yes. So with the upgrade, what did that do for your business? Oh my goodness, it was a, it would allow me to print more shirts in a shorter amount of time. Um, even though I will say I have a condensed version of it because what happens is, and you guys can follow me on Instagram um, at Inked Up Designs ATL. That's I N K E D U P Designs ATL. Go ahead for the and so. <laughs> Um, there, I will say, even though I got more, I get more done with the, um, screen printing press, mm -hmm. it's a lot more preparation. Yes. I so can like, see, it's a you, lot more preparation. You... you have to actually clean the screens completely. You have to put this chemical on it called emulsion, which the design, that's how the design will actually be burned through the screen. It's, it's a, um, a, a machine called a, an exposure unit. Pretty much with an LED light in it, and what happens is you have to put the design on a transfer paper, transfer film paper. You have to print it out with an inkjet printer, and you have to um, 
let it sit on that exposure unit with the LED light in it for at least um, 45 seconds to about a minute and, a th minute and 30, depending on what it is. You have to test it out because sometimes you can overburn it. Sometimes you can underburn it. The way so you'll it's, find it's out. So it's still a heat. So it's still measured by heat. Well, no, not not that process. Okay. You, you, uh, the, for the exposure unit, there's no heat involved. Okay. That's just to get the design from a sheet of paper to the screen. Okay. When you hear people talk about screens, um, that's just to get that from that to there. Once you get the, once you um, expose the design to the exposure unit, you have to wash the rest of the design out. You have to wash the screen out so that only the design, the design is left is in the screen. Okay. So once you do that, you have to let it dry and um, you have to tape it up so that the parts that the emulsion, because the emulsion in your mind, think of a screen is clear, but once you put emulsion on, it's going to be like pink, sometimes blue because they have blue emulsion. I think they have colors for almost all of them, but I usually stick with the pink ones because if it's on a dark color, I can see through it mm -hmm. when I'm pressing it to use the ink on me. I can kind of see a little better than a darker color, but anyway, um... I'm trying to talk. Um, so yeah, so once you blow the skirt, <laughs> once you blow, once you um, uh, uh, rinse the design out, you let it dry and you put it on the screen printing press. And um, from there, you have to apply the ink. You know, a lot of this I feel like is visual, so it's kind of tough to oh, paint no, the picture I, for those I'll on actually, the podcast. Actually, I was gonna say something. So in your Insta stories, um, it looks like yesterday or maybe earlier today. You basically walked your audience through the process that it takes to from the beginning all the way through the point where the shirts are printed. So you, you walk through a lot of that emotion, getting the color off the screen. You did that. So actually, when we finish the podcast, I'm going to help you take that whole video you just did mm -hmm. and put it, turn it into a movie and put it on your IGTV. Okay. And then I'm going to attach that to this blog post so people can actually see the process we're talking about right now. So they'll have a visual to go along with the audio as well. Okay. So 